Good morning, friends. We are gathered here. You're with us online. We are here at the church and the fireside room celebrating Easter still this day. Um, I'm Pastor Angie. This is Jeff. You'll see Pastor Jason and Kelly in a little bit. Um, just want to take a quick moment to make a couple of quick announcements. If you are watching this morning, uh, if you're worshiping with us through Facebook Live, make sure you drop a comment. Let us know that you're here, who you're watching with, um, who you're singing with, however that might be working out. Uh, if you are watching later and worshiping later, you can always drop something in the comments there or on the YouTube channel. Um, in case you didn't know, we do have a YouTube, YouTube channel where we post all of our videos as soon as we can, and you can make comments there. If you have prayer concerns, you can drop those in the comments as well, and we will be praying over those throughout the week, just as we pray for you throughout the week. Friends, if there's anything you need, make sure you let Pastor Jason or myself know. The church office is open throughout the week. Um, we have modified hours, but you can always leave a message, and it will get back to us, or shoot us a text or an email. Um, friends, your pastors are here, and uh, we are we are able to to serve you to serve alongside you in these days so let's take a deep breath center ourselves and we'll do it with song thanks jeff let's cry this out holy spirit you are welcome here what i love about this song so much is um that it really helps me uh to get in that mode that, that god's presence is here um, and I think we have an opportunity right now uh, to really um, lean into the idea that God's presence isn't limited to this church space, right? Um, that his presence is where you are. Um, so begin to uh, just kind of get in that mindset, like Pastor said, take a deep breath um, and just begin to feel God's presence uh, in whatever room you're in, whoever you're with. Uh, let's begin to lean into that this morning.
ago, uh -huh. just like all of you sitting there, when I was young, just a few years ago, I didn't need glasses, and um, everything was great. I could ride my bike and play with my friends, and as I got older, I started squinting a little bit more. This is a squint. Um, when I take my glasses off, I squint, and my mom and dad started noticing that that I was squinting more and more. So they took me to the doctor and the doctor checked my eyes and I got glasses. 
Boys and girls, let me tell you that when I put my glasses on, it was amazing. I had no idea all of the colors and the, that things weren't supposed to be blurry and fuzzy or sparkly if they were lights. It was amazing. I saw everything so much more clearly. And um, it, was, it was good. It was great. So that's my story of my glasses and why I'm wearing them today. But uh, I was thinking there's also times in our lives where maybe you didn't need glasses, but there was something else you didn't quite understand or recognize right away. I didn't recognize I needed glasses. Um, maybe it's a face. Have you ever been somewhere and you're like, oh, I, I think I know that person, but I'm not sure. Or a word in a book when you're reading. Uh, sometimes we come across words where we know we've learned them, but, but we can't get it right away. Or sometimes we don't understand what's going on. Like, maybe why are we spending so much time at home right now? Why aren't we going places? Why aren't there errands to be run? Well, there's lots of things we don't always recognize or understand right away. Jesus' disciples had the same thing. There were quite a few times they didn't recognize things. Uh, one time, one time, they didn't even recognize Jesus. I know, I know. If you weren't sitting down, sit down, sit down for this, because it's true. Jesus' best friends didn't recognize him. How devastating would that be if you were walking down the street, you haven't seen your buddy in a couple of days, and all of a sudden they don't know who you are? Let me tell you about it. So they were walking down the street, and this guy comes along. And they're walking with him, and they're talking with him. They don't know it's Jesus. They start talking to Jesus about Jesus, and they didn't get it. They're walking, and they're talking with him, and they didn't recognize their friend. Ay, I don't know. I don't know, boys and girls. That seems a little crazy to me. So they keep talking to this guy, which is very Christian of them, by the way. If you meet a stranger, you should keep walking and talking with him. They liked him so much that they invite him to eat with them. And so he comes in, and it wasn't until they sat down at the table and he broke the bread that their eyes were opened and they saw clearly that it was Jesus. It was their friend, boys and girls. They realized that it was him. They recognized his face and they remembered what he said, that he was going to die and he was going to come back. They realized, they recognized he did exactly what he said he was going to do. And it's that simple for you too. It's our prayer in this room and in our church family, boys and girls, that you recognize who Jesus is and that he did exactly what he said he would do. And I can tell you one thing. You won't need glasses for that. Will you pray with me? Dear, dear God, thank you for this rainy day. Thank you for this church family and for the children who are watching that so desperately want to know you and need you in their lives. All of them from zero to 101. Dear God, please help us see clearly you and what you've done for us, that you have saved us and that you love us so very much. Let us be your light in this world. It's in your son's name that we pray and we all say, Amen. Amen. My goodness, Kelly, thank you for the awesome reminder that we never know how often we may in fact be walking and talking with Jesus and just have no idea. You're welcome, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Um, 
As we come together for a time of prayer this morning, I just want to share a few things that are laying on my heart today. So mom and dad, if you're watching today, it is my dad's birthday. Probably not going to get to see him. We'll FaceTime later though. So if you guys are watching, happy birthday. Happy birthday! Yay. <laughs> um, the kids have been on my heart a lot this week. The students knowing that they're not going to go back. Um, Brooks and Declan, my two sons, they're in second and third grade. That's not a huge deal for them. For the fifth graders, that's a big deal. For the eighth graders, that's a big deal. For, for the seniors, that's a big deal. Um, for all of the teachers and the staff working so hard, for the administrators trying to do the best that they can to navigate all of this stuff. Um, again, so the doctors and the healthcare workers, those who are being affected by this COVID-19, those who are sick and in the hospitals and need needing care who don't have COVID-19 and just the situation to get in to get health care now. Um, for all those who are mourning, for all those who are grieving and just don't really have a chance or an opportunity to mourn and grieve right now. Um, it's just a sampling of the things that are kind of weighing on, on mine. And I know we all have something today. So I'm just going to encourage you you know, as, as still as you can get your environment now, perhaps it's, it's an extra do donut for the kids to let them sit, sit down and quiet down, whatever it might be. Um, just, I, I would invite you, I would love for you just to join together as much as we can in spirit, even though we are far apart today. And let us come together and just kind of unload some of this stuff and go to God in prayer. Good morning, God. God, and thank you. Thank you for this very day. With everything go going on, with the changes, with the uncertainty, with the misty drizzle and the cooler temps, God, we still thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you for this place, wherever it may be, that we could gather in fellowship and worship of you. Where so many things are weighing in on our hearts and minds today. Lord, help us to let go of the things that we can't change. Help us to let go of the things that we worry about that aren't going to go away. Lord, strengthen our faith and give us courage. And in those times where courage is not enough, God, let us rest on you. Let us lean on you. Lord, remind us that sometimes it is okay to just be held. Lord, day, day by day, we are confronted with so much stress, so much uncertainty, so much partisanship, so many things that seek to divide us, to separate us from one another, and so many things that try to come between God, us and you. And help, help us to see through the clouds and see through the smoke and help us to focus on you and your light. And help, help us to work around the barriers that have been put in place that divide us from each other. And allow us to connect. To connect in spirit, to connect through the use of technology, through phone, through email, until such time as it's good and right and proper for us to get back together. God, we ask your blessing in advance upon the hugs that we know are coming. For the gatherings that will again take place where we can come together, put our arms around our brothers and sisters and just enjoy being together. And until such time comes, Lord, just continue to lift us up and hold us up. Continue to give us patience. Continue to give us perspective. Continue to fill us with hope. Lord, as we gather before you this morning, wherever we may be, all of us have things on 
on our hearts, on our minds, maybe even on our lips, God, that we just want to turn over to you. So we, God, we just ask here in this moment of silence, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, fill us with your spirit, fill us with your love, and please allow it to hold us together. This, Lord, we ask, at, we ask God as your family, as your children, who have been saved and redeemed by the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the first letter of Peter. If you remember, we shared a bit from this last week. This comes from just a little bit farther along in chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, I'm going to share this morning, verses 17 through 23. Hear this, friends. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb, without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was, re but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Friends, now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine, mutual love, love one another deeply and from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Amen. I'm sharing the story of the walk to Emmaus, the one that uh, Kelly had referred to, and it picks up in Luke chapter 24. Hear this word, and it's still the same day. It's still the first Easter. <clears throat> so hear this word. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, and answered him. He answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a, indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hang on to this. Keep it close. We pray with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O holy God, our rock and our redeemer. Moving from perception to recognition, have you ever found yourself, um, Miss Kelly alluded to it very briefly, um, you, you know that you know this person, but you can't remember how. You, you can't remember their name, but you know that you know this person. Have you ever been there? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. See, I, I have a feeling I'm going to have to retrain everyone with this rhetorical it stuff. More and more as I get older. <laughs> Amen. Um, when I first first came to the church, um, you're learning everyone's names. You're learning all the new faces, all the new families. You're learning the stories, and so sometimes you run into each other outside of church, and you don't know how you know this person. Um, it's kind of funny, I was, it was a little bit more than a year ago, I was in a Florida airport, and Gail, you might remember this, I was, um, I was deeply grieving because my grandmother was dying. So I was kind of in my own little world, and I was at the airport, and I'm sitting there, I think I was reading something, or maybe I was, I was probably snacking. That's what I do. <laughs> I love snacks. <laughs> and, <Amen>. um, <laughs> and this woman comes up to me, and she puts her hands on her hips. You guys know how Gail Davis does that. She put her hands on her hips and looks at me, and I'm looking at her going, I know I know her. I know I know her. This, uh, this is this is one of my new parishioners. Her mom is Joan. And I went down the list in my mind of all the ways that I knew her. And I, I was trying. And then I was like, Gail. <laughs> and we'd had this wonderful conversation. And I don't remember what it was. I remember feeling very warm and cared for. But I was going down that list trying to figure out what her name was. I knew I knew her. I knew I liked her. And I had to go down the list 
to see who it was so that I could recall her name. Have you, have you ever been there? Have you ever had to do that? And so, Gail, I apologize. Um, I, maybe, I, maybe you knew that's what I was doing. <laughs> but we, we do that. We do that with people that we know and love um, or knew and loved. Um, I know that when teachers get a new batch of kids every fall, um, they spend a lot of time trying to learn these kids. And they spend that fall getting to know them. And really, the spring is when the magic happens in the classroom because the teachers know and love these kids. The kids know and trust these teachers. And so um, when Jason started talking about the kids and teachers and his voice broke, oh, I was right there with you, Pastor. <laughs> because I know that that's when the magic happens in the classroom too, um, when we not just perceive each other, but we recognize each other. Spirit recognizes spirit, and that's why that first year in a church, when you're still getting to know each other, um, your spirits are kind of testing each other out as well. Um, and it's not just us looking at personalities and trying to figure it out, it's, it's our hearts trying to figure one another out. And so this morning's, this morning's text, um, we, we, had, we had to go there. We had to go there today um, because we're, we're talking about recognizing something that is bigger and, and deeper and wider than ourselves. Um, I do want to jump back to uh, the scripture that, that Pastor Jason shared. And I, did I lose my place? I did. Um, I want you to look at um, Peter, the Peter text in uh, first. Let's see, verse 21. Through him, you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are set on God. And now that you've purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply and from the heart. Friends, as we recognize Christ, as we recognize God's work in our lives, in our new lives through Jesus Christ, we recognize that gift, that love, and we're called, we recognize the call to share it. Um, can you think of a time, can you think of a time where your eyes were open, where your heart was open, where you recognized? love maybe maybe it's the love of your spouse i know that jeff and mary kate are still newlyweds <laughs> um, but can you remember that moment when you knew this this was the woman that god made for you did your heart want to just bust out of your chest when you have those kind of moments uh, i remember um, spirit moments like that. I remember when my brother James was baptized and the water trickled. I was one of the ones that was laying my hands on him. And when the water trickled down onto my hands, my heart exploded. I, I It was seriously, I thought the roof was going to open of Marion Epworth Church and God, the dove was going to descend right there. My heart just exploded with love. There was a recognition of spirit there. There was a recognition of God's love that was so immense that, that my body couldn't hold it. Maybe, maybe it's a recognition of something else. Um, maybe you've recognized the true nature of someone um, for the good or for the bad. Um, I, I know that you find this hard to believe, friends, but, but I've been in ministry for a long time. I have um, cut my teeth uh, in ministry in churches that um, some were healthy, some not so healthy. Um, and and there, there are mean people out there. Did you know that? Have you ever encountered mean people at church? Thank goodness they're not here, Pastor. They're, they're not here. <laughs> um, and, and when you recognize that spirit, it, it shifts how you deal with that person, doesn't it? You still love them. You still want what's best for them. But your, your perception of them has changed. Um, and conversely, have you, ever, have you ever thought someone was your enemy? And then all of a sudden, 
you had that epiphany, you had that recognition that indeed they are not, you are on the same side. Have you ever had that? Um, buddy, I am waiting for our politicians to have those kind of epiphanies that, that we really are in this together. We really are trying to take care of one another. But so when I read this story, when I remember hearing this story, how they walked with Jesus, they were, they were telling, they were witnessing, they were evangelizing, they were practicing, telling the story of how Christ has, has had come, how the, the Messiah was here, and, and they had put their hopes on him, but, but now the hope seemed gone. And I like that little phrase in there, that their eyes kept them from seeing. Because that is such a human, that is such a human flaw. Sometimes our eyes do keep us from seeing, don't they? Sometimes it's the stuff in our own hearts that keeps us from seeing, from seeing truth. So the walk to Emmaus, their eyes were opened when he broke, blessed, and gave the bread that night. And then he was gone. Friends, Pastor Jason and I will be talking with you in the coming weeks about spiritual disciplines, about ways that we practice our faith, that we practice um, things that deepen our roots in faith, deepen our roots in Christ, ground us in his love. And it is those, those practices, those spiritual practices that help us to recognize when Christ is in our midst. Help us recognize, help spirit recognize spirit. And so we're going to be spending some time talking about the, the outward and the inward and the communal spiritual practices that will strengthen us as modern day disciples. We will give you opportunities to practice those spiritual disciplines, to ask questions, and, and to use them. Because, friends, when we are steeped in these practices, we tend to recognize God's voice. We tend to hear the Holy Spirit a little more clearly we tend to see Christ in our midst. I mentioned a minute ago that, that, that I'm a little more seasoned in ministry now. Um, and I want to share a little story with you. My very first, my very first appointment, the Chatham Circuit. God bless the folks of Chatham United Methodist Circuit. It's a little three-point charge in rural Licking County. And the three churches were together and shared one pastor. And I had services at 9, 10, and 11. So I couldn't go off manuscript or we would wreck the schedule for the day. <laughs> and those churches saw themselves as teaching churches. They saw themselves as a place for baby pastors to cut their teeth in ministry. And so they let me get away with just about anything. I could try anything. And when it was a spectacular failure, Jerry Marston would put her arm around me and say, all right, pastor, what are we going to try next? If it was a success, they would take it and they would replicate it and they would do it. And there are ministries that are happening still there that, that some of us started as an experiment. So God bless the Chatham Circuit, and, um, and it was a great place to learn. Now, when I first got appointed there, the parsonage was not the best. Is that a good way to say it? That's diplomatic, isn't it? Um, it was a farmhouse built in the early 1800s, and, and it had some issues, like Critters in the walls um, and a cracked foundation, and um, but it was the first house that Jason and I, my husband Jason and I, got to live in, and we were pretty stoked about that. But the caveat was we didn't get to move into that parsonage at first. We had to wait a while. Um, they had to do some repairs before we could come in, and so I was driving to our apartment um, in Columbus and driving out to Newark 
to, to be with the folks, to do the visits, to learn about things. And then I would drive back to Columbus and it had been a particularly hot and stifling day. And I had been in visit after visit after visit. Um, it, was, um, it was still early fall, late summer, early fall, because we hadn't moved into the parsonage yet. And I had this, this feeling in my heart that I needed to go and visit Helen. I was like, I'll, I'll call her. I am visited out. I am, I never in my life did I ever think I would be peopled out, but I was peopled out that day. I was like, I'll call her when I get home and I will pray with her on the phone when I get home. And, you know, and she kept coming up and I was like, I'll, I'll call her when I get home. I'm not going to forget to call her. And, and I got home and there was a message from Helen that her husband had died and that could I come and be with her and so friends I offer that to you as when you when you feel that when you recognize that spirit speaking to you you need to go you need to make that call you need to do whatever it is that the spirit is calling you to do and as I have matured a little bit <laughs> and as I've matured in ministry um, I take seriously those calls. I recognize, um, I recognize God's voice a little more often um, than I used to. And friends, as we are steeped in these practices, as we are steeped in prayers, we are steeped in our scriptures, as we are steeped in these practices that make us more holy and help us live into our new life in Christ, it helps those those new, that new clothes, being clothed in Christ helps it fit a little bit better. Um, we recognize when the spirit is moving. So friends, our eyes are opened um, by this scripture this morning. And this week, I would invite you to spend some time looking, looking around, seeing things through the filter not a Snapchat filter, not an Instagram filter, um, but through the filter of faith, through the filter of your spiritual practices. Look and see. Recognize God at work in your midst. It's amazing to me how things shift when we put that filter of faith in place. How much nicer <laughs> we are to one another, how much kinder we are, how much more grace we offer to others when we put that filter of faith on. And so friends, this week, open your eyes. Open your eyes to recognize where Christ is at work, to see the truth that we have this new life, this new chance, these new opportunities, um, this new way of living that faith offers us every single day. Will you pray with me? God, your goodness is overwhelming. Your love and your grace never fail. You never give up on us. We are so, so grateful. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to know, and, and mouths to sing your praises. Close our mouths, Lord, in those times where they need to be shut. <laughs> God, you know us and you love us. And sometimes you love us in spite of us. And we are so, so grateful. Lord, watch over us this week. Help us to keep watch for you. That we would recognize you in one another. That we would recognize you and hear your voice. And know, God, you are awesome, amazing, and we love you. Amen. Oh, my God.
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head down I will sing so loved. Do not forget that. Remember your belovedness. So as we move into another week, as we move into another um, time of trying to figure out what our new normal is going to be, hang on to that. Hang on to that promise that God is faithful, that you are loved, and that there's nothing that can separate you from that love of God. Christ. So 
In the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustained you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray blessings upon you wherever you are, wherever you may go, or wherever you may stay. Know that you are so, so loved. Be peace, friends. Be safe. You are loved. Amen.